Well, everybody, I'm back and I'm really excited. And I know what you're saying, Constance, you're always that excited. But today I really, really am. Uh, we have a very powerful guest today, my very special guest. All the way from Vegas is Brent Michael Phillips. He is an author, elite success coach, speaker, and spiritual teacher. And today he's here to talk to us, to share with us from his book, The Formula for Miracles. Anybody need one? Uh, where science reveals the secrets of the spirit. If you've been following me for these past 12 years, you know that's where I live. So I'm going to tell, uh, let him tell a little bit about his journey. But since 2004, he has helped many clients and students all over the world. He's written several books and he's taught hundreds of workshops and performed over 25,000 private sessions. Wow, that's a lot, resulting in well over 1,900 miraculous instant healings uh, in such areas as cancer, uh, HIV, allergies, depression, anxiety, uh, childhood trauma, etc. And so, of course, he's been on all platforms, uh, TV and radio, and he's going to teach us some things today. And uh, I'm really excited about it. So, Mr. Brent Michael Phillips, welcome to the Law of Attraction Radio Network. Oh, I am so excited to be here. This is great. Well, I tell you, I, I was telling Brent, I said, you know, I'm a little nervous. Y'all know I ain't ever nervous, but I, I, I told him prior to hitting the recording that just um, reading the title of his book and reading uh, the PDF of, of his book, his PR person sent me, Missy, when he talked about revealing the secrets of the spirit, that just touched me. And I'm just so grateful for your work. So, Brent, share with listeners a little bit about your journey. And then I got about 100 questions for you. All right. No problem. Okay. So first thing I want everyone to know is, oh, my gosh, I never thought I'd be doing anything like this. Wow. <laughs> to be teaching energy healing, showing people higher consciousness through spiritual study, meditation, not even on my radar for most of my life. Because I grew up in a very culturally conservative area, and I kind of thought that, well, that's just a bunch of new age hippie nonsense, right? Mm -hmm. How wrong I was. And so long story short, I was a huge nerd, always was, still am. I grew up loving Dungeons and Dragons, Star Trek, Star Wars, Lord of the Rings, all that kind of stuff. And when I went to college, I ended up at MIT. Wow. Because the one wow. thing I was good at that I thought I could get paid for was working with computers. And so I went to MIT to become a computer expert. And it was at MIT I discovered the internet. Now, of course, today that sounds funny, especially to the younger listeners. But when I got there in the 80s, no one had ever heard of the internet. And I thought, wow, this worldwide computer network is going to change everything. And it has. And so again, long story short, I finished my bachelor's degree in computer science. I continued on at MIT in grad school and became part of the World Wide Web Consortium. And so in grad, grad school, I helped to write some of the code that is the foundations of the modern internet, which was really exciting. In 1994, me and a couple of my lab mates, we sent the first ever live audio video stream over the web. Wow. So we were doing really cool things. And so when I left MIT, when the internet boom hit, I thought, hey, I'm in a position to do great. I figure I'll go to California, recruit my best friend to start an internet company. I'll work really hard for a couple of years and we'll sell it for millions of dollars and then maybe retire to a tropical island and spend our days hot tubbing with supermodels. So that was <laughs> the plan, right? It's a great plan for a young man to have. Great plan. And it got off to a good start. The, it's kind of funny to, to say it today, but did you know the very first website I ever created was the website for the launch of the Sony PlayStation? That was the no. summer of 1995. That was my first website. So we did that. We did the first website for Disneyland. We did the website for Nissan Motors, uh, several divisions of Sony. And one year into it, I had 15 people working for me. We had a whole laundry list of Fortune 500 clients. We even started a second company to create online computer games based on the technology I developed in grad graduate school. And that, that went on to become 
what today we would call the world's first true metaverse. Mm. It was a real time 3D graphical persistent state world that we launched in the 90s. Unfortunately, it was so far ahead of its time, it didn't get a lot of traction. And even worse, I wanted to be successful more than anything. I really did. And I was willing to work as hard as it took, make as many sacrifices I had to, to get there. And so I was at the office 60, 70, even 80 hours a week. There was no weekends, no breaks, no holidays. It was just work all the time. And I figured, well, you know, I'm willing to trade a few years of my life so that later I can have tons of money. And I figured I'd be retired by 30. Instead, I ended up bankrupt at 40, but that's, you know, that, that comes later in the story. Mm -hmm. And so again, to make a very long story short, I started having real problems with my body. I had serious pain and it started with little aches and tingles, but it got so bad that I actually had to move back in with my parents because many days I was in so much pain. I had trouble just getting dressed or cutting my food. And I used to have about a 10 minute drive to the office. Many days I'd have to stop in the middle and rest because simply holding a steering wheel for 10 minutes was too painful for me. And I didn't panic at first because I thought, hey, you got something wrong with your health. You go to the doctor, they give you something and they fix it, right? And so again, long story short, I spent three years running around to all these doctors and specialists. I ended up in an intensive physical therapy program at the Curl and Job Clinic, which is the top physical therapy clinic on the West Coast. It's where they send the Olympians and the professional athletes when they need rehabilitation. And I didn't get better. I got worse. And it was so frustrating. But I held on because I had gotten an appointment about a year out for the top doctor at Curlin Joe. And I was so excited. I was counting the days on my calendar because I thought, hey, this guy's going to be able to help me. He'll have some treatment or protocol and I'll be out of pain and I'll have my life back. And I remember the day I walked into his office. I was so excited. And I saw him sitting behind his desk. He had all my medical files in front of him. And he asked me to sit down and he said, well, I'm sorry, son, but there's nothing I or any doctor can do for you. Mm. You're never going to be out of pain. You'll never be able to go back to work. And I was so shocked. I, I was speechless. I didn't expect that. And what he told me was, he said, son, I know you don't want to hear this, but I'm going to put you on lifetime disability now because there's no hope you can recover. And I hope there's someone that can take care of you until you die. And with that, I was let out of his office. And on the way out, his secretary said, oh, Mr. Phillips, we've canceled all your upcoming appointments. Please don't ever come back. We can't be wasting our limited resources on impossible cases. And that was that. The, the, the doctors gave up on me and sent me home to die on permanent disability at 27 years old. And I was shattered. I remember I went to go see my best friend, a business partner, and I figured he'd be all, hey, Brent, We've been through things together. We'll get through it. I got your back. Nope. Mm -hmm. His reaction was, well, if you can't work, you're of no use to you. We don't have any space for dead weight at the company. So I was fired from the company that I had founded and created with my blood, sweat, and tears, my talent, my hard work. And he turned around and sold it behind my back for millions of dollars a few months later. And one of the cherries on that hot fudge Sunday. <laughs> was I learned later, he had also been secretly dating the woman I was in love with. And even worse, he had inherited north of $10 million that same year. So he betrayed me, stole the company, sold it for millions of dollars, and he didn't even need the money. Meanwhile, I was broke, desperate, in chronic pain, being told I had no chance of recovery, living with my parents, and so I was in a really dark place. I started day drinking, using drugs. I was suicidal, but I was very lucky. I had a friend of mine that said, hey, Brent, don't give up yet. We got to turn you on to positive thinking and alternative medicine. Mm -hmm. And so that, that really did give me some hope. And so again, long story short, for the next five years, I was living on disability with my parents going deep into credit card debt, running around to every kind of positive thinking, mind power, alternative medicine thing I could. I had acupuncture. I saw Chinese doctors. I took herbs, osteopaths, chiropractors. 
I did Reiki healing and pranic healing, yoga, Pilates. I had magnets and chi machines and vibration machines. I did all these diets and cleanses. I went to positive thinking programs. I jump around on the stage, shout out how I was going to become a millionaire and heal my body and have a great life, right? Power words on my wall, vision board, the whole nine yards. But here's the thing. None of it helped me at all. It was so frustrating that person after person after person, I'd go and see them. They go, Brant, I'm glad you found me. I know I can help you, right? I'd be all excited. I'd put a whole bunch of more money into it to go deeper into debt. And then three, six, 12 months later, they shrug and go, eh, I'm sorry. I guess this just doesn't work for you. And this just happened not once or twice, but over and over and over. I had over 500 sessions of acupuncture in those five years. I had nearly a thousand hours of massage and, and deep tissue work, uh, physical therapy, all on and on, right? And it was so frustrating because I wasn't getting better. I got worse. Later, I learned why, but we'll, we'll come back to that later. Okay. The, this, this part of the story ended in early 2003 when I agreed to have an experimental surgery. I was so desperate, I was willing to try anything. And so I went and had the surgery. And when I woke up from the surgery, my right arm was paralyzed. I couldn't move it at all. And this was a whole new level of, of helplessness because now I couldn't drive my car. I couldn't brush my teeth. It's amazing. You don't really realize how many things we take for granted when you have use of your body and your limbs. And it was, it was again, a whole nother depth of suffering and darkness uh, depression. And my arm was paralyzed for almost six months. And then my aunt Lauren referred me to this crazy healer lady named Terry. And I didn't really want to go see her. I'm like, you know, I've been to healers before I've done all this alternative stuff. Nothing can help me. It's a waste of time, mm -hmm. but she convinced me and I went to see Terry and Terry, I remember invited me and she's like, okay, Brent, don't worry about it. We can help you. You just got a lot of subconscious blocks. And I was like, okay, that sounds nice, but you know, what can you do for me? So long story short, she spent about an hour with me. She showed me how to check myself for subconscious blocks. She showed me how to do this subconscious clearing process and asked me a lot of questions. We talked about my childhood and my parents, what had happened with my best friend and the heartbreak and the betrayal and all the things I had lost and all the pain I'd been through. And she's kind of doing this subconscious block clearing thing the whole time. And at the end of our session, she could just say, okay, Brent, just relax for a minute. We're going to heal your arm. I'm like, sure, lady, right? Go crazy. You're right. Yeah, I figured she had just gone on the deep end of the new age pool, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> and I didn't expect anything to happen. And so Terry closed her eyes and went into a trance. And about a minute later, it was the craziest thing. There was this loud crack and pop in my elbow. It was like a little firecracker went off. And it was like, kaboom. And I was like, whoa. And I remember Terry opened her eyes and she's like, okay, dear, let's try your arm again. And I did. And I was like, oh my God, that, that isn't actually what I said. What I said probably shouldn't be out there in case there's children <laughs> listening, right? But along those lines, right? Fill in your favorite uh -huh. uh, curse term here. I could move my arm. And I, I was astounded that I had come to this crazy healer lady who showed me the subconscious block clearing thing. And an hour later, I experienced a genuine miracle. And it was in that moment that this nerdy engineer and scientist became a healer and a spiritual teacher. I found my real path in life. And I remember saying to her, I'm like, Terry, I don't know what you just did, but can you please teach me? And she was like, sure, Brent, you know, I got a workshop next month. And so that's when I dedicated myself to understanding and teaching and practicing this, because I know there's a lot of people out there who are really suffering. Yeah, yes, that's such it's, a great story. Well, you know, I, I, I've gotten all the questions for 13 years, so people email me from all over the world. So you're gonna get them right now, you ready? Absolutely. Okay, so since you're on the law of attraction, what, why do you feel like so many people feel like the law of attraction isn't working? Is it subconscious blocks? What's the deal with the law of attraction? That's a great question. So it's fascinating. There was a study done at a university in Canada on the law of attraction. Mm. And the results of this study were that about 99% of the people who did the traditional law of attraction techniques 
right? Positive thinking, vision boards, et cetera, felt they got few or no results. So that's pretty bad, right? Right. Here's what I would have to say. The, the typical law of attraction teachings, they're not wrong. They're incomplete. And a so lot of people true. don't realize that the original version of Think and Grow Rich was neutered because the powerful people at the time, such as Henry Ford, didn't want regular people learning the secrets of mind power. So it was neutered. They took out important parts of it. In uh, software, we call it crippleware. You ever download a program and you try to use it and they say, well, 90% of the features are off limits till you pay for it, right? Yeah, that's I've had that what, done a couple of times. <laughs> sure, that's kind of what's happened with the law of attraction. You're only getting like a little free trial version, which doesn't work for most people. And I spent a lot of my life over 10 years researching this. I wanted to understand what causes miracles to happen. Why do some people heal from cancer or depression or addiction overnight? And others struggle and do the best and they still end up dying or being miserable. Why is it that some people can go watch the secret or build a vision board and become a millionaire and other people work at it for years and decades and go nowhere. And I found the answer. Now, the full answer, I can't fit into the show today. If I could give the full answer in 20 minutes, I would, I can't, but I am going to give a few pieces of it. Okay. Give us a few pieces. And I'm going to give everyone an invitation to get the rest of it at one of my live webinars. Okay. So here's, I'll give a few pieces right off. The one piece that you referenced earlier is the theta brainwave. And it was interesting because I spent 10 years working with the masters, starting with my first teacher, Terry. I learned everything she had to teach. And I went to different people around the country and then around the world to find the healers, the shamans, the gurus, the mystics to reverse engineer their process. And this is so important because I'm not the kind of person that was born with a great natural talent. That's not me. I was just a regular person who was really good with computers. That was really, I thought, my only gift. And what I found was this. There's a lot of people out there with incredible gifts. There really are. But nearly all of them, it's a natural talent, something they were born with. And they don't really understand what they're doing. And therefore, they can't teach their students to be as good as they are. And I wanted to do better. So I looked at a lot of the research. There was a lot of research done at the Stanford Research Institute in the 60s and 70s on mind power, paranormal phenomena, remote viewing, telekinesis. There was the research done by the US military with the remote viewing schools in Utah. I, I worked with and studied under one of the women that grew up in those schools. I looked at all these things and what they found was there was a strong correlation between these paranormal phenomena, instant healing, mind power, remote viewing, and what's called the theta brain state. That the theta brain state is what our brains go into when we're sleeping and dreaming at night. And so this is so important because the theta brain wave is like a magical key that unlocks the power of the subconscious mind. And this is the first problem with the typical law of attraction, that it doesn't engage the subconscious. So and what I found was the reason, the, the number one reason that 99% of the people fail with the law of attraction is subconscious blocks. It's not the only reason, but it's probably the, the most significant. The reason that 1% get good results is that they're naturally free of subconscious blocks. Some people just don't have them. Just like there's some people that can eat and drink whatever they want and they stay thin. It's not fair, but it's how it is, it's right? not fair. <laughs> yeah. Some people are born to billionaires and have all the money they need their entire lives without ever working for it. Other people struggle, work two and three jobs just to keep their head above water. It's not fair, but that's how life is. And so the theta brainwave allows us to go into the subconscious and make changes at a much deeper fundamental level. And I look back at why did my session with Terry create a miracle? Because I had done other kinds of healing before. I had, done, I had done probably 50, 100 sessions of Reiki healing. I had tried pranic healing and different modalities like that. Nothing ever, it, none of those worked for me, right? I'm not saying they don't work for other people. Just like I had over 500 sessions of acupuncture, never did anything for me. Though I recognize it helps others and that's great. But I wanted to understand how do we help everybody? How do we reach those people that fall through the cracks? And what I discovered was this. 
there is a science and a technology to it. That prayer, meditation, mind power, law of attraction, there is a technology to consciousness. And like any technology, there's a lot of pieces you have to get in place for it to work properly. One of them is you have to clear the subconscious. To do that, you need a theta brainwave state. And this is why when I had that first session with Terry, she was able to help me where others couldn't. She had the ability to help me find and clear those blocks so that when we did the healing process, I got an amazing result. My elbow instantly healed. So number one on the list is you got to work the subconscious. And so for listeners out there who have written out what they desire for 2022 and um, I, I let you say hypothetically, you know, making more money yep. or, or attracting love. So they would, they would need to get in that, that state, a theta state, which is that right before we go to sleep and then that's right. Identify whatever blocks are in that subconscious, yep. which is so powerful, and shift and change it to what they desire. Because the conscious yep. mind, is that just 5% of what we're I'd thinking about out there? At, at most 1%. 1%. Wow. Yes. If we look at numbers, the, the conscious mind, if it were a computer, would process between 4 to 20 bits of information per second. So that's not a lot. The subconscious lot. mind processes about 4 million. So the subconscious mind, if it were a computer, is literally a million times more powerful. And the, there is a technology to it. First, you have to understand how to check yourself for subconscious blocks. Then you need to learn how to get yourself into a theta state to go in and clear it. And here's the model I want to give everyone right now that will help you tremendously. Okay. It's not a coincidence that I was the software engineer. That was an important part of the divine plan here because our lives work very much like a computer that your body is the hardware and your subconscious is the software. It's the code that runs everything. And so if we look at our computers, our cell phones, our tablets, they all work on the same principle. They have a bunch of software you put onto it, right? And the processor executes the software to create the program. Pretty straightforward, right? Here's the trouble. Most of us are trying to achieve our goals in a way that's totally backwards, doomed to fail. So it's like you're running on a treadmill and every time you start running faster, they just turn up the speed. So you're working harder and harder and harder just to stay where you're at. And I'm sure that sounds familiar to a lot of your listeners. That's where my life was, right? <clears throat> I was working harder and harder and harder just to not go backwards. There was an old blonde joke in the 90s that went something like this. Do you know how to know when a blonde has been using your computer? No. You'll find your monitor is covered with black marker and whiteout. <laughs> mm -hmm. And that's kind of funny, right? Right. It's like, well, my program isn't working, so I draw on the monitor to make it work. That isn't going to work. Never. You're wasting your time. But that's exactly how we're living our lives. We're drawing on the monitor expecting to fix our programs. Yeah. Instead, you got to change the code. You got to fix the software, right? And that's what we have to do. We have to get in. Don't worry about drawing on the monitor. For example, I remember seeing an article a few years ago that was making fun of millennials going, well, the reason they can't afford to buy homes and start families is they're spending all their money on Starbucks and avocado toast. Mm -hmm. That's ridiculous, right? Skipping your avocado toast is not going to make you a millionaire. That's drawing on the monitor. Instead, That's we got to go in and change the program. And so I want everybody to know you have a program in your subconscious that runs every area of your life. You have subconscious codes that determine how much money you make, your physical health, your emotional health, your happiness, your level of success in your career, the, the amount of love in your relationships, your self-confidence. It's all simply programmed into us. It's all software. And if you want your computer to run differently, you've got to change the code. If you want your life to be different, you've got to change your code. If you want to make more money, heal your body, we got to get in and simply reprogram you from the inside out. The good news is it's much easier than learning to program computers. Much, much easier. Right. I can teach most people enough to get started in a couple hours. And 
with a couple days of training, everyone can be performing healings, clearing blocks, and really accelerating their life to a much better place. You know, I, I so appreciate you saying that because, you know, you guys know that I've interviewed a lot of experts in the area. And like you said, it's not bad. It's just not complete. And I hear the frustration of people. I'm doing everything. I got my vision board. I have my goals written down, you know, all of the things. And maybe because I'm a therapist, I knew sort of early. Mm, it's inside. It's down in that subconscious. And so I'm so glad that you're really giving people hope in this area. What else can you share with us around that about well, the miraculous? Yeah. So one thing is, like we mentioned, you got to engage the subconscious. You got to mm -hmm. reprogram yourself. That requires a theta state. But that alone is not enough for most people. If you just do that part, your success rate will go from 1% to about 10 to 20%. So it's a lot better, but still not good enough, right? And so just to continue the story a little bit, after that session with Terry, I did move forward a lot of my life. I was able to reduce my pain enough that I was able to get back to work. I started a company. I got off disability. I started to build a life again. But looking back, I was doing better, but I was still struggling. I was still mm. suffering. And I know now it's because I was living entirely from ego. And it led me to another very dark place that about five years into it, I had made a lot of progress, but I was still suffering. Uh, I had gotten married and gotten divorced. <clears throat> so I had a terrible heartbreak. And I also got sucked into an investment scam. And long story short, they forged documents and so on. And I ended up almost a million dollars in debt from something I didn't do. But, and I had to declare bankruptcy. So it was another dark night of the soul. And it was literally the day after I declared bankruptcy, I met my late mentor, Carl. And Carl introduced me to a whole new level of consciousness. And I want to very quickly give a, a model for you and the listeners to understand okay. this stuff. That I divide consciousness into three generations of technology. The first generation is your typical positive thinking law of attraction, right? Mm -hmm. Vision boards, mantras, masterminds, focus on the positive. And that works for about 1% of people that think and grow rich, things like that. So it's a great start. It's just not enough. The second generation of consciousness involves working the subconscious mind. And so that's what Terry taught me. This is what you see in things like psyche, healing code, emotion codes, uh, hypnotherapy, NLP. So you have a much higher success rate because you have the ability to go in and change the subconscious directly. And with the second gen technology, that's when you start to see medical miracles. You see people healing from cancer, healing from broken bones, recovering from depression, instantly healing allergies, cool stuff like that, right? But your success rate is maybe 10% to 40% on the high side. A lot better, but still not good enough. The third generation is what my mentor introduced me to. And it's very spiritual that it's about understanding the nature of the self. What are we? Where do we come from? Where do we go? How does it all work? How is it that we're all one and yet it seems like we're separate? And I'm going to call out one of the flaws in the law of attraction most people don't see. And it's this. You look at your typical law of attraction program, Constance, I'm sure you've seen dozens or hundreds of these, right? Hundreds. They'll say something <laughs> like, <clears throat> yeah, maybe thousands. <laughs> that you're a powerful being and you can create a better life and you can have what you want. Okay, that's true. Here's the question nobody asks. What exactly is this you? What exactly is this you that's a powerful being? That led me to awakening and understanding the true nature of the self. And I look back at my life and I go, the second generation technology that did a lot for me. It helped me to heal my body, get off disability, start my life again. But I was still struggling. I was still suffering because I was living entirely from the ego. And it's sad, but most people have no other choice. It would be like if you grew up in a distant part of rural China, most likely you would only speak Chinese. It doesn't mean you're stupid or not capable. It just means you never had a chance to learn other languages. And so most of us, 
living in the world, it's kind of like there's an old Zen joke that goes like this. There's an old fish and two young fish swimming around in the ocean. Okay. And the old fish swims up to the young fish and says, oh, boys, how's the water today? And the two young fish look at each other and goes, who is this crazy guy? And what the heck is water? And it's funny because fish don't know they live in water. Mm. Why? It's all they've ever known. Mm. They, they, they don't see it because it's so pervasive. They have no idea there's such a thing as dry land or, or air or outer space. They would assume the whole universe is water because that's all they know. And so for us humans living in the modern world, we live entirely from ego because we don't know any better. We've had no opportunity to see it differently. And the third generation of the consciousness involves the process of awakening to discover the true self and to reconnect us to what we call the quantum field. It is this field of life force and energy and consciousness that permeates the universe. And many of us by living in the mind from the ego have gotten disconnected from the life force. And some symptoms of this are that you struggle, you work hard, you sacrifice, but you never get ahead. Something always happens that drag you backwards, that you'll get very close to your success and then it gets snatched away or collapses. That you may work hard and create a lot of value, but other people get the rewards. Other people get the promotions, the raises, the opportunities. It'll be very difficult to find love. And this is what happened to me. And by integrating all three levels of these technologies, then our success rate gets over 90, close to 100%. And a lot of it is attachment to result. And what does that what, mean? What, what does that mean, attachment yeah, it, to result? It means that we think life has to go a certain way. Mm -hmm. That we go and start a relationship thinking, oh boy, I have to fall in love with this person or we have to get married. Or you, you make an investment and think, oh gosh, it has to go up. So we engage in life trying to figure out from the ego what to do to make life be the way we want. And so I had a lot of people ask me, Brent, tell me what to do to be successful, right? Tell me what stock to buy or what crypto or where to live or what job to take. And I, what I would offer is that's not the right question. Action is important, but it's secondary to presence. I would ask, who do I need to be? to find love, to succeed in my career, to make money, to be happy. And by using all of these things, and I'm not saying the first gen tech is wrong, I'm just saying it's a starting place, right? It is important to have goals and think positively and enroll supportive people, yes. It is important to work the subconscious and clear the blocks and get to the state of state, yes. You put that together with the quantum field work, the awakening to discover who you really are, to reconnect yourself to the life force of the universe. That's what we call presence, charisma, luck. Then we have an unstoppable combination. Thank and you. I can honestly say, I have it never had- but the truth. <laughs> yeah, that, that I've never had a single student or client who wasn't able to make significant progress and achieve a lot of their goals. The question is not whether or not you can do it. The question is simply, are you gonna give up before you get there? That's good. And you know, for my listeners, I know my listeners. So could the quantum field also be God, source, spirit, yes. um, you know, and, and, and your identity would come from, I am, I am a God in the earth. I am connected to spirit, et cetera. Is that what that would look like? That, that's in the right direction. Yes. Okay. That the nature of spirit or God, it's not a tangible object. Mm -hmm. It's not like your car right? It's more like a force like gravity, that you can't point to one thing and go, that's a gravity, right? It's, it's a field effect that we experience. And God is like that too. And people will ask me, hey, Brent, do you believe in God? And I, I think it's a silly question. You know, I'll say, well, I believe in God for the same reason I believe in my computer. Why do I believe in my computer? Well, I turn it on, it runs programs and does computer things, right? So I, I don't just believe in God, I know it's there. Because mm -hmm. higher consciousness is recognizing, yes, there's a body, yes, there's an ego, but that's not you. The real you transcends all that. And in fact, I'm going to, this may shock you or some of your listeners, but one of the new age teachings you'll see a lot is that you are 
some kind of spiritual being having a human experience. I would say it's not wrong, but that's incomplete. It's misleading because you are not any kind of being. Because after all, we know we're all one, right? Absolutely. So if I'm a being, if I'm a soul or a spirit, then someone else's soul or spirit is a separate being, isn't it? So how could we be all one? That's impossible. And this is why awakening takes time. It's a process. You have to see the universe through a totally different perspective. It's like learning a new language. And everyone can do it. That Constance, if you really wanted to learn to speak Japanese, you could do it, couldn't you? I could do it. Sure. It, it would take a lot of time, a lot of work, and it would cost you money, right? You'd need books, tutors, software. You might want to go to Japan. But you could do it. There's nothing wrong with you that says you couldn't do it. And so awakening higher consciousness and success is just like that. If you're willing to engage the process, if you're willing to put in the time and the energy, everyone can do it. It's just a matter of, again, it's not whether or not you'll get there. It's just, are you going to give up? Let the obstacles, the blocks, the setbacks get you down. If you stick with it, everybody succeeds. Well, you know, that has been my experience. I, I, I came from a Christian background and I'm like, man, God is bigger than the Bible. And when I said that they wanted to throw me and that's when I began to study quantum physics and it made me realize this is spirit and science. And then yes. kind of like you, I tried the goal setting and the vision boards, but I knew that I needed to really tap into that spiritual realm. And I'm not saying it's easy, but it takes away from me the struggle and the, co you know, trying to make yes. things happen on my own. Yeah. And when, when I really connected with that on a deep level, and again, it took a lot of time and I spent a lot of money. I was able to make the breakthrough. I was able to get past the attachment to really surrender to the flow of life. And when I went through my mentor, Carl's intensive life training program, uh, in six months, I tripled my income, found love and started a family after I had thought all the ships had sailed. But more importantly, I have a totally different experience of day-to-day -day life. It's not a grind. It's not a struggle like it used to be. Yes, there's problems. Yes, there's obstacles. Great healers, gurus, enlightened people, they still pay their taxes. They still go to the dentist, right? Mm -hmm. their, their, their friends and family will die occasionally. They get sick, right? They wear clothes. None of that changes. But it changes you from a viewpoint of life happening to you, which seemed to, to be the first 40 some years of my life, right? This happened and this happened and this happened. I felt like a punching bag, right? Bankruptcy, cancer, divorce. Uh, chronic pain, million dollar losses, et cetera. Now I see that life happens for us, mm -hmm. that every experience, every moment has a gift. You may not like the wrapping paper, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm here for better or worse. I'm here to tell the truth. Uh, unfortunately, mm -hmm. whether or not people like the truth or choose to pursue it, I can't control that, but I'm here to tell the truth. And I want to be clear that when I had my first session with Terry, all my problems were not solved in an hour. It wasn't that simple. But my paralyzed arm did instantly heal. When I met my mentor, Carl, it's not like an hour later, my whole life was perfect. But it opened the door for me to get there. And that's Thank what I want to do for you and all the that. listeners. I want to open the door and give you a guide and help you on the journey. Rumi famously said that a journey of three weeks without a guide will take over a hundred years. Okay. You, you, you I've spent cut, a you lot cut. of time, a lot of money, a lot of decades of my life. Oh. You cut out for one second, uh, Brent. Are we okay? Uh-huh. We're okay. Right, we now you said, mm -hmm. okay. you said, Rumi said okay. what? Yeah. T tell me where I left off. Okay. I heard Rumi said this. Yeah. That that's where you left off. Okay. Rumi said this, a journey of three weeks without a guide will take over a hundred years. And that's why I'm here. I want you and all the listeners to benefit from my experiences, my pain, my research, my breakthroughs. Now, if you want to go spend 20 years and go through hell to learn these things, you're more than welcome to. If you want to do it the hard way, don't let me stand in your way, right? 
But if you'd like to learn these things easily and quickly, I would love to hand it to you on a silver platter and to make it so easy, so simple that all you have to do, it's like color by the numbers. You do this, you do this, you do this, and then good things come out the other side. It is technology. And it's, it's sad so many people suffer simply because they don't have the right teacher, that it's they're so making true. the same mistakes over and over and over. So true. So give us that information, Brent. How can, how can people become a part of your, um, I don't know if it's a webinar or, or sure. your classes. How can we get your book with uh, your contact info? Best thing you can do is head over to my website at awakeningdynamics.com mm -hmm. and lots of information there. At the top of the page, you should see a big button with an arrow for my next live Helathon webinar. And as, as this interview is coming out and people are listening to it, we have a live webinar coming out this Thursday. So make sure you go get registered. It's totally free. On the live webinar, I'm going to talk to you more about these secrets of consciousness. Give us reveal. that. Give us that date. Sure, it is uh, next Thursday, which I believe is the twenty sixth. Let me. Uh -huh. So it's going to be Thursday, January twenty sixth, and okay. we start at five thirty Pacific time. Oh nope, it's uh, Thursday the twenty seventh. Okay. Yes. So it'll be Thursday, January twenty seventh, twenty twenty two. We start at 5.30 Pacific time, which is 8.30 East Coast. And I'm going to walk everyone through all these seven sacred secrets of higher dimensional living. I'm going to show you how to check yourself for subconscious blocks. I'm going to walk you through a block clearing process. I'm going to discuss the importance of awakening, embodiment, show you a little about intuition. And one of the highlights is I'm going to lead everybody through a quantum field entrainment where I'm going to reconnect you to this quantum field live on the call. And many people, what happens is even on their first experience, you will start to see energy and auras with your open eyes. And this is, th this is something that's really, you have to experience it to see it, right? And I want everyone to know, don't believe anything just because you hear it. Come to the webinar, see it, experience it for yourself. And I'm going to finish with a Q&A session, and I'm going to offer a free healing for everybody that attends. Wow. Give us that. Give us your website again. Brent. Sure. It's awakeningdynamics.com. You'll see information. You can learn more about private sessions, upcoming trainings. But the most important thing is I would love for everyone to attend my upcoming live Healathon webinar, Thursday, January 27th. You should see a big button right at the top of the page. Click here for the Healathon. We'll get you registered. And on the Healathon, I can go into a lot more depth about the consciousness technology. I understand. I'll walk everyone through processes and interactive exercises. We'll have a Q&A period as well as free healings. I'm even going to do a free radiation clearing. Okay. Where I'm going to clear all the harmful radiation from your body and your cell phone just for attending. Because again, you got to see this for yourself, right? This is new. This is different. And this is real. Come have your own experience. So true. So everybody visit his website and uh, I read his book and, and the man knows what he's talking about on all three levels. And Brent, I just want to thank you for, for being on the show. Uh, you know, the people who I have at the beginning uh, of any year to me are very important and uh, sort of lay a foundation for people to begin living their best lives. And so, so, so I'm grateful to you for, for gracing us with your presence uh, and with your wisdom and knowledge today. Well, it's been great to be here and I hope we can get, get, reach out with this message and touch some lives. I really do. Okay, everybody, uh, make sure you visit his website. And I still have not come up with my uh, mantra for the end of the show. So I'm just going to say uh, that your best years, your best days, your moment, your best moments are ahead of you. Make a decision to create a powerful week.